Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Wednesday, the 27th day of December, year of our Lord, 2023. It is the third day of Christmas. It is also the feast day of St. John, Apostle and Evangelist. Uh, remember, there are 12 days in the Christmas season ending on Epiphany Eve, 12th night, as it's traditionally called. It's kind of sad in modern times to see those traditions going away. Uh, they, especially for God's people, uh, many churches look more and more like the world with their ditching of any kind of liturgical calendar. I many still celebrate Christmas and Easter, but outside of that, you know, sermon series here and there and everything that has nothing to do with liturgy. But this, you know, for us, the rhythm of the life of the church in in uh, the liturgical calendar. It marks the seasons, the days for us. It, it, it organizes our year around holy things. So, of course, we in Advent, not only are we preparing for the birth of Christ in the church, but in our lives, too. When you think about it, you know, we, we sort of dismiss it because I think we think we're celebrating Christmas. But what are we doing? We are you know, preparing for the feast, cooking, buying presents and, you know, making guest lists, who's going to come, you know, find out who's going to be there, stuff like that. You know, that's preparation. That's a, a, prep, a season of preparation. And, you know, there's stress and stuff like that. It's, sort of, it's a season of repentance, too. We, we, we're forced to think about our place and our families and maybe mend some fences. It's a good time to do that. You know, we're going to be sitting with people who we profess to love. And maybe uh, if there's a family rift, it's a time we, we overlook those things. So that, you know, then we move into Lent. Uh, we have the Epiphany season. We move into the Lent. We celebrate the Epiphany too, and we'll do that on January sixth, which I believe is a Saturday. Remember, next week too. Just a brief aside: next week, this coming weekend, next week, this coming weekend, we will celebrate the first Sunday of Christmas, and then we'll celebrate also the, the eve of the circumcision in the name of Jesus slash New Year's Eve on the thirty-first that night. So uh, mark the calendar, the details. Of course, we're in the bulletin and on the calendar. Uh, anyway, so we'll, we'll move into, in February, we'll move into Ash Wednesday, and that's February 14th this year, and we'll discuss then why it can change so much in the, in the Western Church, the dates of that. And then, you know, spring comes, and we, we start preparing for Easter during the season of Lent. Again, it's that same thing, you know, traveling maybe, the, the school year's winding down, uh, uh, but that season of Lent, you know, it's a, a great time of year, and we're, again, we're doing the cooking, and the, who's coming to Easter, what are we going to do on Easter? The, of course, church is a big part of Holy Week for us, as it should be. And so we, we sort of also think about as Holy Week approaches, and, and we do Lent like we do in Advent, we have midweek services and stuff like that, so we are separated a little bit more from the world. I, we do a lot of special things during Lent, because it's such a deep season, not only Ash Wednesday, we put the ashes, the imposition of ashes, we walk around with a physical sign of repentance on our foreheads. We uh, um, sing very somber songs. We, we take things out of the liturgy to prepare us for Easter and keep us mindful of uh, the repentance season. That is why the crucifixion was necessary. <laughs> and why we're, in, and again, how much we're loved by God that, that he would have his son do that for us. And anyway, we uh, have, uh, as I mentioned, the midweek services. Uh, we do uh, uh, weekend prayer vigils you know, for a couple hours, an hour, a couple hours, and things like that. So when I'm thinking about maybe doing a little bit more of that, we try uh, throughout Lent. If you're like me, and I and I share this with the congregation, try to read, try to read, and contemplate all 150 psalms each week. It's actually not all that hard, uh, 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 but you have to make time for it. You know, people go to work, too, and stuff like that. So anyway, this liturgical calendar, Advent, Christmas, Christmas tide, which we're in now, marks us in our lives. And not, that doesn't just pattern the life of the church. It patterns our lives as well as God's people, as it should. It helps us to mark the rhythm of our life, our daily lives, by the life of Christ uh, as manifest in the life of his church. And it just keeps bringing us back to those things. So we always stay focused on Christ. And what he's done for us. Not a big fan of, of sermon series. If you've been around me, you know that. I you, you, people occasionally come and ask me if I'll do it. And the answer is usually no. Uh, oh, it, it can't. I, let's scratch the usually. I don't think I've ever said yes. Uh, and the reason is all those things I just said about the rhythm of the church here and, and how it, it just keeps us grounded and what faith looks like in this life, uh, 
and why this was all necessary, and then what's to come for us. Okay, four minutes in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And tonight, following the daily lectionary, we read from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. And that is the gospel of the Lord. And that is fascinating. We're going to pick that up tomorrow night with the Holy Innocence. We'll save that for tomorrow night, but... Today, as I mentioned, we celebrate John, who was not martyred. So we have martyrs in word and deed. So last night we had Stephen, a martyr in word and deed, his proclamation of Christ, and then he died for the gospel. And then uh, John is a martyr in word, uh, suffered for the word, gave witness by the word, and that witness caused him suffering. They tried to kill him, but he survived. And he died about 100 years old in Patmos. Tomorrow is the Holy Innocence, and they're, 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 they're babies. They're two years old, and they're put to death by Herod. And so they're they're martyrs indeed. Uh, uh, so it, you know, remember we are we are as joyful as we are, and we should be joyful because we know the whole story. We also, in that joy, this is where joy is different than happiness. We also know we're going to suffer. We know the world hates the gospel. You know, just just if you were, I would love to hear your story. Two things. I, I'm serious. If you, I, I would. If you give me permission to share it, that would even be better. Uh, but not necessary. But I just want to hear your story, and I can allude to it without disclosing your secrets. But, yeah, maybe that's probably a better idea. But I would love to hear the story of this past Christmas feast, and you were gathered with your family, that you either had, you learned, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say this, I'm not going to bring this topic up, particularly about religion. Politics is an easy target. Let's say religion. about And all the nuances about what you confess as a member of our church body, a member that, uh, that holds up like our church does, with the inerrancy and uh, 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 sufficiency of Scripture, uh, sola scriptura. And I'd be curious to know if you, one, you, you know, just thought ahead and said, nah, you know, I know it's going to happen. If I mention stuff, I'm going to have a, uh, 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 I'm going to have a big fight with, you know, my crazy cousin Sally. I don't have a, a cousin Sally. Or, uh, uh, or they're going to pick a fight with me about these things. Or maybe you had that happen. You like, you, you said something. And you said, oh, you know, how ridiculous is that? whatever that may be, and, you know, like, how can people actually buy into that is something that's truth, truthful and something we should uphold as a culture. I'd like to hear your story if you had that happen. But the point is, is that the proclamation of the gospel and its saving work in this fallen world causes problems. It's not welcome here. It comes, you know, <laughs> and it breaks in, and it rescues, and it saves, but it is not welcome here, uh, and, and we find that out. So, and we're going to hear more about that tomorrow. But anyway... Interesting thing about these magi, wise men, the Greek word is magi, wise men. Uh, not wise guys, uh, it's a far side comic that has that. Um, uh, funny though. Um, and and uh, there's a lot of things we don't know. You know, traditionally the church ascribes that there were three 
they show up when Jesus is about two years old. You've heard my lectures about, you know, putting them out in your nativity set. Go ahead, you know, just know the story. You know, we I got we got a house full of them. Um, where you look, there's a nativity set, and uh, they'll be coming down, you know, in a, in a week and a half. Anyway, the, we we come up with three because of the three gifts, but the noun is just plural. Uh, some of the reading I've done, because people do challenge me on this, uh, um, but some of the reading I've done is that, you know, some of the earliest church writers, I mean, I mean early, you know, ascribe the number eight, you know, it, but we don't know. Um, it, it gets established at three as time goes by, but, it's, you know, again, that's not that important. Actually, it's not important at all. But to realize these people were not, they were outsiders. And we read this reading also on the Epiphany. And... They were outsiders, and they're led to Christ. Now, that's very important. Something leads them to Christ. not like they just sort of stumble across them. They're out looking for God. So whatever was in their history, maybe they had heard during, it's called the Diaspora, so the Jews were scattered under Nebuchadnezzar and the Assyrians. Uh, uh, and then, you know, even at the time of the Romans, stuff like that it would happen after the time of Christ as well. There'd be a dispersion. Why, the, why are these Jews, our brothers and sisters in our communities, you know, are, are good citizens, you know, don't, don't, again, don't, don't, you know, don't, 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 if somebody has ever ticked you off in their ex-nationality or ex-religion, there, we have things to say about those things, but we say them in love. And two, don't throw a whole people group under the bus because you had a bad experience with one person. You know, that's, if you, if you're a student of logic, you realize that's really bad inductive reasoning. It's called a logical fallacy. It's arguing from the general to the particular from the particular to the general, scratch that, reverse it. So, you know, so you know, all redheads are fiery tempered because I knew run, one, one redheaded person that, that yelled at me, you know, when I was six years old. Therefore, they're all, you know, you know nonsense. Um, uh, so don't do that, okay? Um, anyway, uh, these magi, for whatever reason, they, they, they are, there's this miraculous event, not just sort of, there, there might have been something that triggered it, like, celestially, a sign in the season, but something's going to lead them. Uh, this miraculous star is going to lead them specifically to where Jesus is. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit did for you and for me. He led us to the font where Jesus is. We pray in the church at the end of a baptism. We say this prayer before we go on with the rest of the service. We don't leave the font because that's where Jesus is. So the you know the the Holy Spirit's used mom and dad or or other adults in the church. Uh, if it's an adult baptism and pastors. But the Holy Spirit has used that word to bring them to the font, all right? And, uh, uh, and there, there Christ is, and there they're saved. So um, we hear this, uh, they quote uh, Micah, and uh, of where the, you know, the OU Bethlehem in the land of Judah. Remember Judah, the, Jesus is called the line of the tribe of Judah, and he is, the, it is from that tribe, uh, uh, Leah's and Jacob's. Uh, offspring that the Messiah would come. So from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel, Jesus the good shepherd. So anyway, think about that. The I'm going to try to find it. I couldn't find it last year. I'll, I'll look for it when I'm done here, but the, uh, on the YouTube channel, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you, then you don't need Facebook. Um, Facebook could book the stick in the eye. Pop. All this stuff is on, on YouTube. It shows up a little bit later because I the way I do it, I, I think I could probably invest in some technology and do it all at once. Maybe I should do that. But uh, um, I always put a piece of artwork on, on these 9 o'clock devotionals that usually has something to do with the reading. And I can find the one, and it shows an angel holding a candle, and, and, the, and the, the candle, uh, the lit part, uh, the flame, uh, is uh, a star. And, and the, 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 the angel is leading the wise men uh, in its train, you know, to... To Bethlehem, to the that, think of it that way. It's not like you know. I, I look up at uh, it's cloudy up again, um, and I, but I look up and I see Orion, or even a moon, a big full moon, which we have right now. It's not going to lead me to a house. It might get me started on the journey, but it isn't going to lead me to a house in the middle of a town that's pretty densely populated. So even if it's not, it's not going to lead me anywhere other than generally, uh, you know, like let me know if I'm going east, west, north, or south. So anyway, this is a miraculous thing. But the point is that these outsiders are led to Christ. That's exactly what happens today. You know, the Spirit works the same way. He, he brings you. Remember the third article of the creed that you, and if you have a catechism, 
hymnal, or if you have a hymnal, it's in there. Uh, you go uh, at the end of the prayer section, almost right to before you get to the, the hymnals, the, the hymns, the hymn, this is the hymnal, before you get to the hymns, and the catechism is in there. So here's Luther's explanation of the third article of the creed, which is, uh, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. That's the third article of the creed. And this is Luther's explanation, and it summarizes things like we're discussing tonight. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel. And remember the ancient word for church, ecclesia, is to be called out. That's the biblical word for church. The New Testament word for church is there might be a sprinkling of like synagogue gatherings, like but the, the common word is ecclesia, and we translate that as church, but it means to be called out. Called out, he's called me, how? By the gospel, that's the candle, you know. He's, the, the, the word of Christ brings you to Christ, because it is Christ, all right? Uh, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified me, and keeps me in the true faith, in the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ, the one true faith, etc. And then, you know, so, it, you know, the Holy Spirit, just like this miraculous star, brings us, the outsiders, to Christ. And then, of course, you know, we shower him with their gifts, and, and he showers up with his gifts, and you can think about our lives of sacrifice that we live, and whatever form that takes in our lives, but we do. You know, good works flow from faith. But interesting thing, too, how, it's going back to what I said at the beginning about suffering for the gospel, like John, who was, the, the Romans tried to griddle him. The Romans were... You know, they, they're no different than us. We all have this within us because we're fallen. And think about this. When you have carried hatred in your heart, think about how you've thought about other human beings. Have you wanted, you know, their death? Have you prayed or, or thought about their suffering? You know, realize that's in you, and you have to stop that. You have to repent of that. You know, if you are called to suffer for the sake of the gospel, okay. You know, you remember this is not the life we're living for. And God will use you in your suffering to do his mighty work, okay? Uh, but my point is, is that we see that within us. And, you know, think of road rage and stuff like that. That's all that coming out. And, um, you know, these are your fellow human beings. And so maybe they're not the best drivers. Probably you're not either. You know, and you've probably done, you know, some, some really dumb things behind the wheel of a car. And by God's grace, we're willing to talk about it. But anyway... Um, you know, you realize we all have this within us. And so we have to just, you know, just give it to Christ and say, this is your problem, not mine. So it is amazing, though, when you think about the Romans and what they, what they devised to make people suffer. And people didn't think anything of it. We're becoming that as Americans and uh, our nation is. And it, you know, that's abortion, you know, it's, that we were joy, we're calling death a right, and we want to celebrate that. You know, it's no longer uh, it should be it should be non-existent, uh, but the, it was a little more a little more acceptable. Remember, if you're a Christian, this is what we confess. And if you're in a Christian church that doesn't confess this, you are not in the right Christian church. Okay, uh, uh, you know, there, it, 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 the politicians tried to make it more palatable, and those who push these things, it's going to be safe. You know, uh, uh, safe, legal, and rare, whatever they say. This is a euphemism. Uh, it's not safe if you're the one in the womb. Uh, uh, and now it's, you know, abortion without apology on demand. That's what's in us. Um, uh, anyway, uh, John, they tried to kill him. He survived. He must have been horribly disfigured. He dies. He lives a very old age, probably around a year, 100 years old. He did take care of Mary. He dies in Ephesus, probably became a leader in the church of Ephesus. But the, the point is, and we're going to see with the Magi tomorrow, that the good news brings a cross. Take up your cross and follow me. But we know the story. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you are prepared in the sight of every people. 
a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the marriages and families of your people, that husbands and wives, parents and children would live in ordered harmony according to your good and gracious word. We pray for parents, as always, who must raise children alone, that you'd keep them from falling into loneliness and despair, and that their needs would be provided for, and that uh, we, as their neighbors, would care for them as you would give us the ability to do so. May we, as your people, carry the gift of marriage and family into our communities and neighborhoods and, and, and thus share the light of Christ and the goodness of these gifts with those around us. And, uh, we, we are reminded that we so desperately need to speak in our communities. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who travel, guide their steps, and allow them to reach their destination safely. And at the end of their time away, away allow them to return to those whom they love. Bless those who are separated from their family because of vocation, especially uh, those who working to protect the freedoms that we enjoy here and around the world. Uphold them, keep them safe, and return them at the end of their time to those whom they love. We ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing. Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Ardo, Klaus, Luray, Pat, Pam, Marianne, Cecil, Bob, Jenny, Joan, Aaron, Allison, Allie, Scott, Amy, Don, Fern, Ashley, Camden, Jason, Bob, Jim, Tom, Eric, Beth, Clint, Paul, Brad, Christy, Jeff, Dylan, Dave, Anita, Marlis, Jeremy, Karen, Sue, Tim, Bert, Lori, Chris, John, Heather, Dawn, Liberty, Joe, Phil, Katie, Michelle, Bethany, and all who cry out to you. According to your gracious will, place your healing hand upon them. We ask you to be with the family of John, brother in Christ, who was called from uh, our, our Valley of Sorrows to your, to your, to your gracious bosom. Uh, that is our sister in Christ, Carrie's godfather, um, and uh, or not godfather, grandfather, and uh, uh, the husband of Dolly. Uh, we ask you to bless the family with peace as they now look forward to a joyful reunion before your throne with all those uh, who've gone before us in the faith. And we also ask you to bless the family as they travel to gather for the laying of his mortal remains uh, into the ground, waiting for that day of resurrection. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Put your hands, I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn to Joy to the World, 387. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rock hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found. Far as, far as, the curse is found. 
He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. That's joy to the world, of course. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. God's grace. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.